This video will show you how to identify poison ivy and will show you some of poison ivy's lookalikes. Poison ivy's leaves are separated into three leaflets. This is the origin of the saying, leaves of three, leave it be. Poison ivy leaves can be glossy or dull in appearance. Apart from broad, mitten-like notches, poison ivy does not have minor serrations on the margins of its leaf, though sometimes it may have multiple notches or reduced notches. Each of the labeled leaves in this scene are poison ivy. Some are mostly smooth and others have deep notches. Poison ivy leaves are occasionally covered in wart-like structures. These are galls and they are caused by mites. Poison ivy stems are usually brown or red and the leaves attach to the stem in an alternating pattern. In the winter, those stems can be identified by their offset buds and prominent leaf scars. Poison ivy can grow independently as a shrubby plant. Poison ivy often forms vines that are hairy, which is the origin of the saying, hairy vine, no friend of mine. These vines can climb trees and other structures. They can branch out into the open and appear like the lower limb of a tree. You can see in this scene that much of the vegetation on the bottom half of this maple is actually poison ivy. It can tolerate full sun to full shade and grows in a range of habitats, grassy areas, on and around fences, and of course, throughout woodlands. Poison ivy creates berries, which are typically green when unripe and white when ripe. There are several harmless plants that are often misidentified as poison ivy. The most common of these is a small tree, Acer nagundo, or the box elder maple. Its leaf shape and structure is very similar to poison ivy. The best way to tell the difference is the arrangement of stems. In poison ivy, the leaves are attached to the plant in an alternating pattern, while in box elder, the leaves are attached in an opposing pattern. Another common misidentification is of Virginia creeper and thicket creeper. While the mature plants are fairly distinctive, each with a palmate arrangement of five serrated leaflets, the younger plants can have a reduced number of leaflets, and the alternating arrangement of these young leaves is like that of poison ivy. Creeper's young leaves are somewhat more pointed than poison ivy's. If possible, look further down the plant for these young leaves to see if there are additional leaflets emerging on older leaves. Creeper vines are typically less hairy than poison ivy. Various brambles, including black raspberry, grow in similar habitats to poison ivy. They can be differentiated first by their thorn-covered stems and second by their finely serrated leaves. Honewort is vaguely similar, but its leaves have much deeper indentations as well as serrations. Various wild grapevines grow in similar habitats to poison ivy, but do not have trifoliate leaves or hairy vines. Wafer ash, a shrub or small tree, has trifoliate leaves, but these leaflets are joined or nearly joined at their center, whereas most poison ivy has the center leaf extended slightly. Fragrant sumac is also trifoliate, but like wafer ash, their leaves join in the center. Fragrant sumac also has a compact growth form. If you encounter a plant you think may be poison ivy but are unsure, it is best to avoid it. Poison ivy produces a substance called urushiol, which causes contact dermatitis when touched. Urushiol, once on a surface, can transfer to another surface, for instance from pet fur or clothing onto skin. All portions of the plant contain urushiol, from the roots to the leaves. This includes the berries, whether ripe or unripe. Urushiol can be transferred in all seasons, including in the winter, from exposed stems. Urushiol can also be transferred into smoke when the plant is burned. If this smoke is inhaled, it can be very dangerous. Most people are allergic to urushiol, and those who are not currently allergic can become sensitized to it by exposure. In short, don't touch this plant if you can avoid it. Please see the description of this video for more resources and guidance on poison ivy.